Yes, guys. So welcome to this little breakdown. Um, I've decided to actually do it publicly as well. Um, just because, you know, every single week I always send it out to my weekly members and everything. But you know what, for today, especially since my birthday as well, you know, I thought, you know, what, let me just send this out fully, especially for the week ahead. There's a few good setups in terms of fundamentals as well. We're going to be going through that fully. Uh, for those of you that are probably seeing me for the first time, I've just decided to go public recently, to be honest. So obviously on Instagram as well, I've got sort of a more of a public profile. So you can obviously follow me there. Um, but yeah. What we're pretty much going to do on this call is go through fundamentals first and then technical analysis afterwards. I've pretty much got a watch list every single week of what pairs we're going to look for. But to be honest, with the elite strategy that I've been implementing for the past few months, honestly, the testing has been insane. Um, and especially applying it as well recently, you know, in the group, for example, last week, pretty much hit a nine risk reward from all the, we could say signals that I was sending out, but pretty much all the entries that I was taking myself personally um but yeah let's get straight into it so obviously the way i always go through everything on a weekly call is always first of all fundamentals the reason is we want to know where the market's going what fun what pair or what sort of um economy is doing much better than the other ones from there on we can kind of decide what the fundamental direction is and then obviously we can use that um getting into our technical so um, starting off with all of that, the way I usually break it down is I put it down in one PDF for all my students. Um, and then I pretty much do an overall review of what happened last week and then what pairs we're going to look for this week, especially. So, for example, for this week, the main four pairs that are going to be coming up in terms of news and events is going to be New Zealand dollar and Canadian dollar. There's both a, um, an interest rate decision coming up. So that's going to be quite important. And then, of course, for the US dollar, we've got CPI data. For the pound, we've got GDP data and I believe employment data as well. Um, so that's going to be quite important in terms of, you know, the week ahead. In terms of what we had last week, um, a JPY pretty much outperformed everything. Main reason was because, you know, there was a bit of uh, good news. Um, the wage growth, I believe it was. I believe it was. And um, yeah, in a way, we're kind of, you know, we're going to talk about JPY a bit more, just a bit more detail. But yeah, that's pretty much all of what happened last week. Um, so yeah, let's get straight into it. So the way I usually do it, pretty much it's always going to be for each currency, positives, negatives, and then, you know, you pretty much got the mixed or the inconclusive. That's pretty much what we're waiting on. Um, so obviously from that, you can't decide exactly. But the main thing that I like to break it down is with the conclusion. So for example, with this one, uh, the FOMC last week, and obviously Chairman Powell, he pretty much insisted on more rate hikes going forward. But then again, the market was still unconvinced, you know, hence why the drop from uh, the NFP report actually happened. You know, on face value, the NFP report did a lot better, um, but it seemed like the market actually focused on the negative numbers more than the positives. Again, in terms of what we're expecting going forwards, you know, we've got both positives and negatives um, at the moment, especially with the US dollar. The main thing that we need to look for um, is pretty much having a certain direction. Now, Obviously, until it happens, we won't know uh, for sure. Um, but the CPI report is going to produce either higher than expected results or lower than expected. Now, what does that mean? For the US dollar, I'm going to go into it in a bit more detail. But with the higher than expected CPI report, that would obviously push up the odds for a 25 basis point rate hike um, you know, in July. And then, of course, potentially for later on. So pretty much that goes in line with what Chairman Powell was talking about. So that would get the US dollar to be stronger. However, if the opposite is also true, the CPI comes out lower than expected, uh, we can start to look at things like, you know, money flows into Euro, for example, or the pound or whatever, they start to rise, stuff like that. So this is the way you start to um, think about fundamentals and how to actually apply it. Um, so yeah, pretty much is gonna be waiting on CPI report. And then these are pretty much the two outcomes that we're going to be seeing. Um, again, JPY sort of news might be quite important coming out as well. Uh, with the euro, obviously, you know, I'm going to zoom in so you guys can actually see and read everything that I've written. Um, I'm pretty much taken from my news reports. Obviously, guys, I'm not writing this out word for word. I'm taking it from the news reports and then and all my resources that I take from banks and stuff. And then the conclusions obviously written by myself. Um, but yeah, with the euro, there's not too much at the moment. So the movement will mainly be based off reactions on risk flows and also uh, based on the US data that's coming out for the week ahead. Uh, but just in general, a quick note, the euro has been doing a lot better than most other currencies at the moment. So hopefully we can see this continue. Um, but yeah, now moving on to the pound. You know, again, recently we've been seeing more positive data coming out for the pound. 
Um, we've got some notable data points that's coming out this week. So we've got labor market data coming on Tuesday. So that's tomorrow. Um, and then we've also got stuff coming on Thursday as well. So that's the monthly GDP data. I would generally say after, after sort of, you know, inflation data, these are pretty much the most important, important piece of data. So uh, the pound expects some sort of movements from there. But yeah, in, in conclusion for the pound, recently GBP has been finding more strength when other currencies have actually been struggling. Um, so yeah, in a way, I'm, I've kind of got this bias where hopefully if things are in line with the data and everything, you know, the pound should continue to get stronger, especially compared to the US dollar if we are going to expect, for example, a weaker dollar as well. So GBP USD, obviously that will go up just depending on if we get the right data in line. Again, guys, with fundamentals, you have to understand what's going on at the moment, what's potentially going to happen, and then how we can use that um, to sort of implement our data. So I hope that really helps with that one. Um, with New Zealand dollar, this one, again, lots of news pretty much coming out with this one. But the main thing, again, the RBNZ, the Royal Bank of New Zealand, they're going to be meeting next week. So pretty much this week now. Um, again, with some of the data that's been coming out recently, a slightly negative bias towards it personally. Uh, with the poor data as well as weaker Chinese data as well. Um, so again, the possibility of both directions, it could be just dependent on what decision has actually been made. Um, so whether it's going to be a pause or a small rate hike, that's obviously to be seen. Um, but yeah, you know, the the ideas of where we can expect, so confirmation of a pause on Wednesday could cause small disappointment. And then there, therefore, for example, New Zealand dollar, that can kind of sell off to these kind of areas. Again, if we do get the opposite as well, we can expect a move to these kind of areas. That's the thing, guys. When it comes to fundamentals, always be prepared for both directions. If we get the news that we want to see, that's obviously what's going to happen. So, um, yeah, that's going to be it for this one right here. And, um, okay, cool. With Australian dollar, in all honesty, not too much is going on fundamentally right now. Um, so, obviously, with that, you know, I'm not going to push for a particular bias in the market. That's definitely one tip that I always give out to many of my students as well. Don't push out any um, any bias when there actually is none at the moment. That's one thing that will definitely save you more than more than anything else, really. Then we've got the Canadian dollar with this one as well. Like the New Zealand dollar, it's a bit mixed. We could get two views. Right now, from what I've been seeing, there's a 50-50 chance that we see this all. Uh, we see both decisions. So in a way, you know, we could get um, a zero basis point rate hike which is obviously a pause or we could get 25 basis point rate hike that's usually what we're going to be expecting um so yeah with this one it's just going to come down to actually waiting on the decision and what happens and then it's obviously from there we can see what happens so if we get the rate hike as expected or if it's a bit of a surprise to be honest um obviously that could give the canadian dollar some strength for example if it's a pause and they also give a bit more dovish commentary that can also be deemed as quite negative for the currency. So that could obviously drop off for now. Um, so yeah, with JPY, this is going to be the last one that we're going to look through. Um, lots of news that's happened sort of recently and everything, but in terms of data and everything, there's been some more positive points for the JPY. Um, you know, guys, for, for the longest time, JPY has actually been just continued weakness, continued weakness. You know, you look at any pair, um, that relates to JPY, we've only seen strength for the longest times. And as you can see, I've only been looking for buyers in a way. Now for the first time, we can potentially start to look for sales. And that's one of the setups that I'm going to go through as I go through this. Um, but yeah, long-term, obviously, you know, it, it is going to depend. I've added in some long-term um, sort of biases of what some banks are actually looking for. Um, but yeah, as a conclusion for JPY, for the first time, JPY data has actually helped it. Um, what this could actually mean for everything is, you know, the market might actually be hoping for more of the same and eventually we might push away from the ultra loose monetary policy stance. You know, that's the main thing that's been dragging JPY down. Hence why we haven't been able to get into any um, sort of long-term JPY pair cells, for example, like GVP JPY, USD JPY, AD JPY, anything like that. We've only been looking for buys. Again, though, uh, big US dollar news next week. So that could really help and turn the direction. But yeah, I think that's going to be it. Obviously, just a little screenshot of the main days that are coming up. You know, Wednesday seems like a very, very busy day. CPI data, we've got 
New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar as well. So that's one day to really be careful of if you are trading around that time. Um, but yeah, that's going to be pretty much it. Now, moving on to the next part. So um, this is the second part of the call that I usually go through. This is pretty much where I discuss, um, obviously, now we've looked at fundamentals. Now we're going to be getting into um, our technical charts. Now, generally, depending on what sort of comes out and what's expected, um, I'll probably have between six to 10 pairs on the watch list that will keep on the high time frame. So, for example, I'll mark out the points of interest. I'll mark out, you know, supply demand zones, everything like that. And then also potentially where price could move towards. So if bias is a bit clearer, so for example, one of them that I was, and in fact, this actually started moving already. GBP USD was one of them pairs that in a way you could clearly see from our charts. I've only been looking for buys and already, you know, now it's been Monday, but that's already been coming into play. So um, yeah, you know, th this type of thing is where fundamentals really does help you. Um, again, when it comes to my strategy and everything, uh, you know, the elite strategy that I've been talking about recently, it's honestly, it's been doing wonders, you know, for, for me personally, last week, um, these were pretty much the results. Again, it's something where I'm only looking for consistency. I'm not looking for a crazy one to one to 15 or one to 30 every single day. Honestly, when I'm, you know, I speak for myself here, but when I'm dealing with bigger accounts, for example, it's not something where I want to go for crazy returns, but I want to take it, you know, a bit smoother, but again, less less risk in a way. And obviously you can see from my results, you know, four wins uh, throughout last week. And then again, um, one of them, I think went to actually break even, uh, obviously took some profits, you know, throughout all of it, but pretty much four wins and one break even, I believe it was. So, you know, you can kind of see, all the trades that I'm getting into, again, I'm always sending these out in the Discord whenever I do enter in the personal analysis section. Anytime I am entering over here, you know, this is the type of thing that I'm looking for. I want to get myself in. I want to get the team in as well. And again, with that note as well, um, I just want to give a little reminder that today, obviously, I have got the biggest discount on that I've ever really had. If you are lucky enough to watch this video soon enough, you know, you would see that the discount is still on. To be honest, I'm only ever going to keep this on um, around my birthday. So next July is probably the next time I'm going to be doing this, you know, 30% off. So if you want to get involved and obviously get into the discount, you guys have seen with the Elite Strategy, I've only been talking about it recently. But, you know, a simple five-step, step-by-step guide. Um, we use this thing called the Golden Confirmation that not many smart money concept traders actually use. Um, again, there's only three entry models that I do teach. Very, very simple. You know, already the students have been applying it uh, up until now. I've been seeing crazy returns on them. You know, every single day, students have been getting in. Honestly, so many testimonials. Like, I can literally just scroll in through. I can already, you know, there's no point of me going through every single one. But again, the impact that it's leaving um, just recently already, so many students getting in. Um, you know, even today, for example, let's see if, yeah, already people starting to get in again over here as well. Very, very simple um, of how we do get in. So if you guys are interested in that, obviously it does come with the um, with a full strategy and everything like that. Again, a consistent approach from all the back tests and everything we were doing. And obviously you, these are live back tests as well. 106% um, gain in just six months from EURUSD. And, you know, these types of results are stuff we've seen already. Now risk to reward last week. So if you want to get involved, 30% off just for now. Um, obviously, I'm going to leave the dates and all the coupon codes and everything down below. Um, but yeah, take advantage of it whilst it's here. Otherwise, you know, it's going to completely go towards the end. And again, if you want to reach out for crypto payments, you know, just look at my Instagram. Um, it's only Diamond Capital, nothing else on there. So let's get into the rest of the charts for this week um, and le let's see what points of interest particularly interest me so at the moment AUD USD is kind of in this mid range you know when you're looking at your charts if you're in between this mid range of 50% or so you don't want to be aggressive and take any trades in between there you want to wait for price to break out of this significant structure so anywhere above here anywhere below here for example and we have a decisive break as soon as we have that break above that's when we can certainly start to look for trades in a certain direction. So if we break above here, I'm going to be looking for this imbalance to get filled. Let me just zoom in, this imbalance to get filled. If it's the other direction, we've got this imbalance over here as well. Then price is going to slow down at this point of interest here 
or potentially here as well. So that's one thing for later on. Obviously, this is going to depend on um, CPI data and everything like that that I've talked about. Um, but yeah, that, that's pretty much it for ADUSD. Obviously, I could go through my full watch list, but I just want to go through the main ones for now. Um, this one's actually been moving straight through. So with EuroCAD, I've mainly just been looking for buys, to be honest. So this kind of buy zone is what I was mainly looking for. As we can see, this has just been broken through. So obviously, we're not going to be monitoring that anymore. For me personally, still, I'd love to be able to get into some buys from this kind of area, potentially even down here. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it for this pair. Obviously, you can kind of see up until here, mainly going to be looking for buys. Euro GBP with this one, um, obviously, you know, Euro GBP, to be honest, is one of them pairs where it works the best uh, with the elite strategy. You know, with this one, we're only focused on charts a few hours of the day. We're only going to be looking at a few pairs. And obviously our confirmations are very tight. So you can see the results here as well. But EuroGVP was one of the main ones. Um, I haven't, yeah, haven't explained it fully here which each trade was. But yeah, for me personally, I'm going to be looking for sales. The reason is, obviously, we've had this little pullback up here. We've taken liquidity. But now finally, we've actually broken down below fully. We've closed below the lows. And now in a way, I'm only expecting a continuation from these kind of areas. Again, if somebody asks me, where am I going to be able to decide where? With me personally and the way I do teach the team, it's going to be look for confirmations in these areas, wait for these areas to get hit. Obviously, you can take a high time frame approach and obviously take limits there and all that. But obviously, with the strategy involved and everything, the elite strategy, confirmations is the way to go with this. And hence why we take minimal losses with something, like I've said, with an average of a 60% win rate, again, up to 80% in some of the tests. And this has been consistent tests as well. You can you can kind of see how, you know, how clear our confirmations are with these. So yeah, some kind of sales from these kind of areas. With EURUSD, uh, for me personally, I would love to get into these buys right here. As you can see, some push up from this kind of area and then obviously up above right there. So Hopefully this one does make sense in terms of why I'm looking for that. For the longest time we've been looking for buys, we've had the pullback. Liquidity has been taken down here. We respected the demand zone. So a lot, of, a lot of words I'm talking about here, but if you are into smart money concepts, hopefully you will understand this. And now price has just been pushing upwards. Again, what's this going to uh, depend on fundamentally? Let's get back into the, um, into the bias. All going to depend on the CPI report and what's going to happen. So hopefully... We can start, uh, this kind of can fall in line with our technical analysis as well. Expect a little reaction over here, um, but mainly look, going to be looking for buys from this kind of area. Next few pairs, obviously, I'm going to be looking at two more uh, for you guys. GBP USD, the move has already happened, to be honest. So for me personally, I'm going to be waiting for the elite strategy uh, times tomorrow. Hopefully, we can get in with the rest of our team. Um Obviously, with the elite strategy, in terms of hit rate, you know, how many trades we can actually get into is something where we can get into it daily. You know, just proving the results as well. Um, you can kind of see that. In terms of what I'd look for personally, if, for example, we do get a break above here, this area now becomes valid for me. So this area would be the area that I'd be considering if we get a break above. If we don't, it could be this one or potentially this one still over here that's kind of been untouched in a way. So I'm going to leave this here for now. Um, but yeah, that, that's going to be it for that one. In terms of USD JPY, for the first time, as I've said, we're actually starting to sell off. Hopefully we can see at least a push into this kind of area down here. When we start to get there, obviously that's a bit of a, you know, um, a full retracement. So we can re uh, expect a little reaction over there. So obviously I've left my alerts there. Uh, just to remind me of what to get into. Um, but yeah, some kind of sells from this kind of area to push it up until here at least. Obviously, as we get into the week later on, um, obviously on Wednesday, we do have CPI data. So um, yeah, that, that, that's going to be it from me, guys. This is as simple as I keep it. In terms of my weekly breakdowns for all the students, you know, now I believe we've got over 1,500 students or so. Um, obviously the community has just grown and in a way you know just just looking at some of the results already from from everything simple simple from the elite strategy just one to five trades every single time again like i've mentioned 
all we aim for in all of this is simply one to threes, one to fives, one to sixes, something like that. It's, it's something as simple as that. So please, guys, if you do want to get involved, the 30% off is just available for now. I'm going to leave all the dates of when it does expire soon. Um, but yeah, please use the code BIRTHDAY30. If you do miss this, and um, obviously you're watching this at a later date, obviously that's unfortunate. But, you know, from time to time when there are sort of um, stages of growth in terms of when I hit certain milestone, milestones, I might do little discounts here and there, but nothing as big as this. You know, probably won't see this for another year or so. So guys, please, um, I do hope all of this was helpful. I'm going to be sending this out to the Telegram as well. Obviously, that's going to be for free. Uh, it's the public Telegram, really. And then obviously, in terms of my charts, I'll be sending that through there as well. But hopefully, you can kind of see the thoughts behind my analysis, how I start from the weekly time frame, uh, from the four-hour time frame, the one-hour time frame, fundamental bias in line as well. And then obviously, we can get into our um, our entries later on once we reach these kind of areas. So guys, that's going to be it. Take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.